All right. This is a uh, update on what I'm doing here on my Peterbilt. Um, we're putting a new front axle in it, and uh, well, it looks like we're doing air ride now. I was going to go spring ride, and then it just progressed from there. But um, so everything's out. Um, pretty well ready to drill some holes to move your hangers back. I think most people that are up on this stuff understand what's what's going on. Um, if you want to run a longer spring, <clears throat> and I looked around, I, I, I looked around different kits. I talked to different people about having them do it. Um, I'm just not a kind of person that pays people to do stuff to my truck because fix everything myself so I just always feel better about fixing my own stuff and doing my own projects it's not that I can't afford to pay somebody I just don't want to because well hey we're, we're all about saving money and uh, I'm just as capable um so your old spring hanger your rear shackle hanger was here um you have to move it back to where your belly strap was so it goes right about there and then your belly strap that used to be here moves back to here. I got to redrill a couple holes. This does go through your motor mounts that are so there's, there's a little extra thick there. So you want to make sure you hit them just right if you drill those holes. Because if you're a little off, you're going to miss the holes in the motor mount. Um, here I have the cab bracket off, cab mount off. I am actually changing my cab mounts. Um, this truck is not a unibuilt truck. It's just just missed all of that. The uh, cab bushings were shot anyway. So we're putting a unibuilt cab bracket on here, cab mount. Um, the old one, you can see the difference. A typical day cab mount would be here. Um, or the older trucks, and then there's your unibuilt one. The unibuilt one is much heavier. Um, I do have plans at some point of cutting the hole bigger and making this an actual unibuilt truck. So I had those for a while. I noticed that the the bushings were shot in the cab mounts. So I thought, well, no better time than now to do it because I got it all apart. It's easy to get to. Um, so those are going on uh, with new uh, new rubbers and everything. And this will get added to the parts pile. Uh, so initially, the intention was just to replace the axle with a wide track axle, which I that is not a new axle. It is a used axle. Um, it's a 12,000 pound axle. Unfortunately, not a 13 or a 14. But it is a wide track, so it turns sharper. Um, it's only a three and a half inch drop, just a standard drop. It's not the five inch car hauler axle that everybody's doing. I, I get too much off road and, and all kinds of stuff. I really didn't want the truck riding any lower than necessary. <clears throat> the old axle was worn out. The brakes were shot. Um, the kingpins were about worn out. The steering, uh, components were getting worn out and, uh, my bushings were shot in my springs and my spring hangers were shot. Um, the drag link was getting kind of sloppy. It was just time to do all that maintenance anyway. So that led me into buying another axle. Well, then we take the good parts and clean them up and paint them and make them look as decent as possible. Other truck rebuilding, putting frame rails in. Like I said, I know how to fix stuff, so I don't know much for paying people to do it. <clears throat> There's a lot of different kits out there. Um, I found a local guy that was building some kits, and um, he had his uh, system kind of figured out. Um, they're all fairly similar. We're going to run a single Kenworth airbag. Um, so it's the same airbag as off the back of a Kenworth. The eight bag airbags are a lot shorter. Um, single shock. That's, that's how we had it set up. 
Um, I was going to, that's a factory Peterbilt spring. Um, the one in, in, in the front there. Um, that's a 379 spring, but they're both factory Peterbilt springs. Um, I was going to put that in and just leave the truck spring ride because I, I was not having a whole lot of luck deciding on what to do about air ride. Um, then I thought, well, I'll just run single leaf and make it air ride. But I, I really, it concerns me a little bit um, if you would do that. There is potential to break that leaf. I mean, it probably would take a while and it would probably take a lot of wear and tear till that one leaf might snap. But being that it's not designed to go up and down all that much and, um, you know, we're best case it breaks in the back and your axle stays in place worst case it breaks in the front and your axle goes back into your frame or your cab um that is something i did not want to happen to my truck it's not a new truck but it's it's certainly a good old truck and it it's uh, it's worth making it right so these other springs from peterbilt there's the part number that's peterbilt part number I'm so happy they're made in japan um That's a factory Peterbilt 389 spring for an air ride, factory air ride. Um, so obviously, like a lot of people tell you, it flexes a lot here in the back. Um, this heavier main leaf is to help hold, hold everything in place, basically. Um, and you get a lot of your flexibility in the first smaller leaf. Um, it's designed to flex more. Chances of it breaking are probably a lot slimmer. I'm sure they can break. If it does break, you still have that big leaf to hold your axle in place. So, um, and at the end of the day, it's going to give you a better ride because it's a longer leaf and it's, it's designed to do that kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different kits out there. A lot of single airbag kits. Um, there is... I think only one guy building a double airbag kit, kind of like the factory Peterbilt. And it's a beautiful kit. It's a little more money than I spent. Um, my biggest concern with that is, you know, if for some reason he ever goes out of business, where do you get airbags? Because they're, they're very specific to, to that. And there's probably a source somewhere. But either way, the Kenworth airbag is pretty prevalent. So... There's this is a this is our shock bracket. I have a longer bolt to go through the spring. And this is your bottom airbag bracket. It sits on here like that. U bolts go through, go through the axle. Um pretty simple, holds everything in place. Um shock goes on here. This is for your leveling valve. And uh put your airbag on, put your bracket, bolt it to the frame. Um, pretty simple. We have leveling valves for both sides. I have to plumb all that stuff and, uh, you know, it kind of has to all get figured out because there's no instructions with this kit. That's fine. I'll make it work the way I want it to work. So there's a cab bracket again. Um, this side's a little easier to look at, but belly strap, old belly strap. This moves back to here. Um, oh. But it comes to your bushings. Because I did a lot of research. And <clears throat> there's not a huge bunch of information everywhere about all this stuff. And believe me, you do whatever you want. Don't blame me if you do it wrong. So. Get the bushing out of here. So your factory 379 has just a regular straight pin that goes through there. Um, and this is a different this is a different bushing setup than the 379. So if you're doing a 379, you kind of have to keep it this way because your front um, frame horn is designed to accept this type of pin. So you can't convert it to a Kenworth or a 389 pin. It's you got to keep it the way it was. So, 
This is inch and a half. So you push this bushing out, this bushing, this is a 379 bushing. That is inch and a half. This factory 389 one is inch and three quarter. So you need a bushing to take up the difference. So this is inch and a half, but this has to go in there. So this is inch and three quarter to inch and a half bushing. So you push this on to here and you'll, you know, I'm not gonna shove it on right now. You actually, I actually gonna need to use two of them because the bushings are only two inches wide. So until you get them pushed on, this whole thing is four inches wide. So you get this pushed out and then you push this stuff in there, straighten all that out. And that fixes that problem. So then you can put this under the 379. So that's one thing that you have to figure out. Um, as for those brackets, I mean, it's it should work fine. Um, there are some other ways I think I would do it differently, but um, we're gonna try that and see how it works. And um, when it comes down to it, this thing's gonna sit a lot lower. I might actually put a block underneath the axle because this truck has standard air leaf suspension from Peterbilt. It's not low air leaf. So this truck just sits higher in general. Um, you know, I'll see, we'll see how, where it falls with leveling valves. We might put a one inch block in there to keep it at a, a little bit better spot for ride height when you're cruising down the road. But um, that's it. I'll do another video uh, when I get done or when I'm further along with the project. But that's that's where we're at now. That's what we're doing. And once we're done with this truck again, we can get back and finish that one. I uh, use my skid loader to hold up my axle while I paint it. Um, yeah, easy peasy. So there it is. We'll uh, keep working at it and I'll, I'll do an update. I, I can only get so far today because I am actually waiting for another spring and some other parts from Peterbilt. So um, that's the way it goes when you just start doing stupid stuff like this. But All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.